found out my wife cheated and our son isn't mine, so I divorced her. Now she's begging for mercy after her lover ran away, and she's struggling with the child. Well, a couple of weeks ago I found out that my wife cheated on me six years ago. The way I found out is that her sister told me after going to visit her to find out how the delivery of her first child was. She confessed to me that six years ago my wife told her that she slept drunk with her best friend. In her words, my wife was very sorry. At the time she told me I was with my son and immediately after leaving her house I went to take a paternity test with him, fearing the worst. A week later I get the results and my fears came true. My son is not mine, for some reason. I began to see the boy differently, more as an acquaintance than a son. With proofs in hand I confronted my wife at night when the child was sleeping. She asked me who told me and I simply told her that it is none of her business, although obviously it will not take long to connect the dots that it was her sister. Well, that is not my problem now. Regardless of that, I asked her for a divorce, which is now in process, she was devastated. She swore to me more than once that nothing happened with anyone again, that she has been faithful to me in body and soul since then. I held back the urge to insult her to avoid complications during the divorce issue, not believing a word she said, mostly blaming the alcohol instead of taking the blame herself. After talking about it, she threatened me saying that she would demand full custody of the child. I was so annoyed at that moment that I told her okay, I don't want anything to do with something that is not mine, that she keep the child and I'll keep the dogs. We have two dogs that we adopted as puppies and they are currently 8 years old each. After my words she tried to convince me to take care of the child with her, that I am his father. At that moment I exploded. I was so angry and I had held back so much the urge to scream that I just yelled her to go and take her bastard with her. A week has passed since then and I am at home. It is in my name because it is a gift from my parents. She went to her parents' house with her kid. She has not called me since then. She left with everything and the half-asleep kid when I yelled at her, especially since it was the first time I really yelled at her, it sure affected her. I talked to my parents and my dad told me that I did the right thing and that I shouldn't be raising something that is not of my blood. And I agree with him, however, the pain is still there. My younger brother told me to write here to entertain myself. I am currently seeing a therapist three times a week, who told me that I have already taken the first step, which was to leave behind what causes me pain. It just hurts to know that my family no longer exists. Regarding why my sister-in-law told me everything. According to her, she felt guilty seeing me always happy with my son, knowing that he may not be mine, and that the fact that we went to visit her in a moment of weakness caused her to completely break down with guilt. I don't know how true that is, I just know that right now I feel tremendous hatred for my wife and a feeling between pain and resentment for the child, although it's just time to get ahead. I just hope the divorce goes smoothly. We have separate finances and properties, and if she really asks for child support I have proof that it's not mine. According to my lawyer, that's more than enough if she tries a legal process for that. My therapist also recommended that I not see him nor her, that regardless of the child's feelings, I should focus on my own first, that the child is no longer my problem and the sooner I accept it, the better. Sorry for the misspellings, English is not my first language. Edit, well, I just saw that there are almost 10,000 comments on this post, so for the sake of brevity I will respond to the comments that I see that are the most repeated. 1. I am not from the United States, I am Latin American. In case you have doubts about the legal process to follow, at least in my country, if there is no biological link, which there is not, then a person can legally renounce the assumed paternity of a child in case both parents are in the process of separating. 2. The process mentioned above is a civil process. Criminally I can also denounce my future ex-wife to request compensation. But I don't have the energy to go through a criminal process which is usually much more aggressive than a civil one. 3. For those who say that I do not love the child, the fact that I feel bad means that if I love him, but I know that it is wrong to love him. It is very different from adopting a child or raising someone else's child because in both cases you have full knowledge of the subject. That was not my case, I'm sorry. 4. I have no relationship beyond cordiality with my sister-in-law. I don't know her motivations for confessing what she said and the truth is that I don't care, the thing is that it happened and we must act accordingly. 5. I am not going to replace my therapist, I trust his professionalism and, as he said my job is to ensure your mental and emotional well-being. You are my patient, not your future ex-wife nor her son are, only you. So I trust his judgment. 6. The reason why I preferred to keep my dogs is because with them I had the decision to adopt them. Something different with the child. In the same way, I want to clarify that I did not yell bastard to the child. But rather I said it to my ex referring to the child. 
I did not tell him directly. 7. I have no intention of having contact with them again. All the bidding is being done by my lawyer. I will only meet with my ex in case something needs to be negotiated. But considering that I am appealing the paternity of the child and that we have separate finances, there should be nothing to negotiate. 8. The reason why I didn't post this in an Am I the Idiot is because I am totally sure of my decisions. With all this, I thank everyone for commenting. Everyone has their opinions, and if you raise children that are not yours, well, okay, you are within your rights, just as I am within my rights not to. You have the right to judging me. But that won't take away from the fact that your truth has the same weight as my truth, because in the end both are just points of view. Update. Well, two weeks have passed since my first publication and three weeks since everything happened. Not many relevant things have really happened, but here is a short summary. Approximately three days after my publication my ex came to my house and asked to come in. I went out and met her at the door. I told her that she is not going to set foot in my house while I am here if she is going to say anything. Let it be at the door, well, she practically begged me to take her son back, that if I want to cut off all contact with her, that's fine, that she deserves it, but that she can't raise a child alone, that she has job, that raising him alone is going to destroy her dream of being a notary. She works in public records and is two more years away from running for the judiciary to get a vacancy to have her own notary. I tried to explain to her in the calmest way I could that my therapist is the one who recommended me to cut off all contact with the two of them, and to please leave my door before I lose my mind. I love the child but I don't want to take out my anger on an innocent, even less considering that this innocent is the product of her inability to keep her legs closed. I said this last thing with a bit of anger, but I never raised my voice because we were on the street that the child deserves better and that she is currently responsible giving it to him. I don't know how, but that's not my problem anymore. After that we talked a little more, she resisted the urge to try to cry and make a scene because, once again, we were on the street and she is someone who always she took into account what people said about her. The last thing she asked me was to at least let her see the dogs. I told her no, that the best thing is for them to get used to her absence. See her again after so much time will only make them euphoric. After that she just nodded and left. Two days after that she called me when she received the divorce papers. My mistake was answering the phone because immediately after about 30 minutes she was yelling. To which I later managed to say that the papers must have the number of my civil lawyer. So she can call her if she has any questions. After that I silenced her number. She has not come to my house since then nor tried to call again. That same day I contacted a friend that I made during my master's degree and I told her to go out, she accepted and well, we've been going out since then. Finally last Friday I told her to be an exclusive couple and she accepted. She has stayed sleep at my house for a few days, she already knows my dogs and adores them, which I appreciate because I couldn't start something with someone who doesn't accept my pets. We are currently taking things easy, she knows the drama I am having with my ex and the child, and she respects my decision. She asked me if I will ever have contact with the child again. I told her maybe when he is of age to understand my decisions, but that I don't expect it to interfere with my life in the future, to which she just nodded and was glad that I take myself as a priority during this process. Maybe this took a little longer than I expected, but this is the summary of what happened these days and well, many people have been asking me for an update so here it is. Update? Well, how to say it, I'm officially a divorced man. In my country there is a type of divorce called quick divorce in which, if there are no common assets, joint finances and children involved. The divorce can be carried out municipally and not judicially, avoiding the entire process involved, which would have included conciliation, distribution of assets, etc. etc. Based on what has been mentioned, you can guess that the only problem was the issue of the son that we both have. Well, there came the issue of the paternity test, with which it was possible to verify that said child is not mine and that my name was successfully taken from his birth certificate along with my last name. The child currently has both of his mother's last names. Regarding how the divorce went, it was not easy. My ex-wife tried more than once to use the child's mental state to make me return to her, and although I thought about it more than once it was thanks to remembering everything that happened that allowed me to stay focused. I must also thank my current partner who supported me at all times and always supported my decisions. I already know that none of this is my fault, but having her tell me this also somehow helped me. Finally, after many discussions and with our lawyers involved, I told her that I can pay her half of what a nanny's salary costs for her son while she fixes her life, but that the other half, but whatever comes after she will have to pay for it entirely for herself, to which thank God she agreed. But I told her not to expect me to take care of her son for her, to which she agreed. 
She has always been a person very dedicated to her work, so I suppose that having to be a single mother has shocked her a lot. In any case, for mere curiosity I asked her if she spoke with the child's father, to which she said that she tried, that he even lived with them for two weeks in her parents' house but that he and his son simply have nothing in common and there is no way they can get along. Even she has had to intervene so that he and the child does not end up screaming to each other. So, after a pair of weeks the guy just left her home. Anyway, although it is somewhat sad, she is a woman with a good job and with a good figure in a year that she will have the help of a nanny. It is more than enough time for her to find a suitable stepfather for her son. In the meantime, I don't plan to talk to him yet. Maybe I will do so in a couple of years or when he's a teenager. But if the child doesn't want to talk to me, I'm simply not going to insist. I understand if he hates me, so I won't try to have a relationship with him if he doesn't want to. After everything we talked about the child, she told me that she hated me, and even more that I got a partner so quickly, which I thought was very rude because my current partner was there with us and I had to intervene before that an argument between the two occurred. Even though she ended up signing the divorce papers and that she appreciated my help, she couldn't stand that throughout the conversation I looked down at her, as if I felt compassion for her. She has always been a fairly proud person because everything she has achieved has been on her own merit. So me looking down on her as making her less than me made her feel hurt and angry. I told her that I know what she's talking about. I just have the same look as always. I seriously think she has some paranoia problem. But hey, that's not my problem either. The important thing is that she ended up signing the papers and that I can finally have my life again. Although for a year I will be paying half the minimum wage for a nanny, it is a fair price for peace, I suppose. I had bad feelings for her too. But during this month I ended up just accepting it and moving forward. Yes, I hate her too, but not enough to say it directly or to wish her a bad karma. I suppose she has enough with her problems. I thank my current partner for having to put up with all this crap. More than once I told her that she didn't have to accompany me to meetings or worry about it, that they are my problems. But she said that my problems are hers too, and that I shouldn't be carrying all that alone. The truth is that it has helped me a lot to take a load off my shoulders. She also understands that I am in no hurry to get married. Not this year and possibly not the next and she understands it. Well, at least this chapter of my life it is about to close without long-term consequences for me. Story 2. I, 36 male, have been with my wife, 35 female for 17 years. We have three children together. I was always of the mindset that I wanted monogamy in life, one woman to come home to and that I'd be with for the long haul. I had women try to talk to me over the years but I never pursued it because I was completely content in my marriage. My wife was my dream girl, and I never wanted to hurt her. Over the years there was two occasions where I discovered she was being unfaithful in our marriage. One was an off and on again affair that lasted a few years with her married coworker, and the other was a fling with an ex she dated in high school when she went to visit her family states away. I'm sure there will be people who say I am stupid which looking back I can't even deny myself. But after a period of separation with both situations I decided to forgive my wife as I never wanted to raise my children in a broken home like I had been and I really felt like we could make it through it. We were young whenever the situation with her coworker happened so I chalked it up to being young and making dumb choices without thinking. For a while things were seemingly okay. I never fully trusted her but I tried my best to push back my doubts because I knew if I decided to forgive her then I had to do my best to move past it and have a clean slate. It's been four years since the second time she'd been unfaithful, and I felt like I made the right decision by letting her have that chance to show she still wanted to be in our marriage. She was a different person for years and we were happy and even had various things set in motion for the future of our family. However, two months ago my reality was once again shattered by yet another incident which in my mind was by far worse than the others. I ended up receiving a message from one of my best friend's wives. This friend knew my wife a little. He'd met her in passing but it wasn't like we all hung out together or anything like that for me to even worry about them. We worked together so there was some times my wife would bring him up multiple times while we were talking about work. She would bring me coffee to work and also one for him. I noticed when she did she'd dress in more revealing clothing than she usually wore but I never commented on it. She even convinced me that we should buy him a joint birthday present and take him out for drinks on his birthday. Just little things like that which were obviously weird but like I said I didn't think I had anything to worry about with either of them. To my knowledge he had a good marriage with his wife, he never spoke badly about it so I didn't think he'd have any interest either. Not to mention we'd actually been friends for a very long time and I trusted him. 
I'd make comments in a joking way to my wife about how she took too much of an interest in him and she laughed it off saying she just wanted to have another couple to be friends with. She never actually tried to plan anything as far as to hang out with him and his wife as a couple. I agreed they would be good to be friends with so again I never thought too much into the overly friendliness of my wife with him. Turns out I was way wrong not to because I was met with multiple screenshots implying they were engaged in a full-out affair. I wanted to get my proof situated before I ended up confronting my wife because I didn't want her to have the opportunity to manipulate the situation or try to lie her way out of it. So I started to go through call logs, credit statements, etc. Because I didn't know how far this actually went past the social media screenshots I saw. When the truth came out, neither of them tried to lie to me about it. I found out they were sneaking off to hotels when she was supposed to be doing doubles at work and he was supposed to be off with family. And that my friend would leave work to go see her at her job basically every day for a month, and she'd meet up with him on his lunch breaks. They were even planning a weekend at a hotel for the next weekend before the truth came out. I obviously cut ties with my friend and honestly I have no idea what to do about my situation with my wife. Their affair ended and my wife apologized profusely saying she just got carried away. She said that she'd felt lacking in our marriage with both of us dedicating so much time to work, other things and that my friend was there and a nice guy. She said she let herself envy the way he treated his wife and wished she could have had that with me but was afraid to tell me I wasn't doing enough in our marriage. So in her words, she made a mistake and that she didn't know how to end it once it started. For now we are living in the same house because realistically neither of us have the means to leave right now as her family doesn't live here. Plus the costs of renting and houses here are absurd. And on top of that we still have our children in our house who are all still in school. She is basically trying to do anything to keep me around including telling me I can see women casually outside of our marriage. As long as I come home to her she would never hold it against me as cheating. I told her that's not much of a marriage and it's certainly not anything I ever set out to have but she is hellbent on keeping our family together by any means. She's even brought up how we shouldn't let our kids live in a broken home because of our marital issues. I guess my wife is under the impression that nothing could make me want out of this marriage and that by offering things like that she thinks will fix our marriage. I guess in a way that is my fault for letting so much slide in the past. I do love her in some ways but at this point I think the love is more just from the fact we have kids together and that I've been with her for nearly two decades rather than feelings of being in love. My self-confidence is low and my wife is out of my league but still I don't think that's enough of a reason to stay. She claims she loves me and doesn't want to lose all we've built and are building toward but to me I just can't see how that can be true when she was so okay with running around with one of my only friends. I can't trust her, to me her word is meaningless, I forgive her then how long until she goes and does it again. I do think people can make mistakes and be forgiven because people are flawed. But this isn't just one slip up. And truth be told my faith in her is so low I don't even know if there's been more instances on top of the ones I actually know about. My mental state is essentially a puddle of mud right now. I'm sure there's probably someone reading this calling me a dumb sass and I can't even argue that but yeah basically my life is a crap show and I don't know how to proceed. Edit. I'm not staying with my wife I should have clarified that better. Me saying I don't know how to proceed is more talking about how to go about handling this with my children. I've never dealt with anything legal so the stress of having to meet with lawyers and also not knowing how to go about our living situation. I have enough proof that my wife couldn't flip the switch and take everything from me but as a guy that's always something you have to worry about. Thank you for your words, and some of you saying I'm a dumb sass, trust me I know, can't change that now unfortunately. Just have to keep moving forward. Some relevant comments. I don't know what you're waiting for man. I'm sorry but drop her, move out, sell the house, and divorce. I guarantee you will be a 1000 times happier. Think about the kids. This is not a good environment for them. This is not a good model of relationship for them to grow up around. You are not setting a good example. It's long past time to move on. Stop doing this to yourself already Jesus Christ it's been years of this nonsense. Leave her. You should have left after affair number one. But she's obviously a cheater and has zero respect for you. Have some respect for yourself and find someone who will treat you right. Get rid of her. Out of your league. Looks fade man. I read this entire post. You are out of her league. Your wife isn't a good person, maybe a good mom, not a good person. Please leave and find someone that is, your kids will be better for it. Better late than never. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like our videos, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.